Um, I want to talk about Glenn Greenwald. Um, so Glenn Greenwald, and this was one of my um, one of my patron contributor ones. Alexis Alexander Alexanderson. If you get a, uh, Alexis Alexanderson, if you get a chance, I'd love to hear about the situation in Brazil is at this point. I'm still not completely clear what was exposed related to President Bolsonaro, and I'm greatly concerned about the death threats against Glenn Greenwald and his family are getting because of what The Intercept exposed. Anyway, always love your videos. Thank you. Um, Alexis Alexanderson, thank you, man. I appreciate your support. And Chris G, same. Appreciate your support. Um, so, Glenn Greenwald. So, Glenn Greenwald exposed... Let's start... Let's start a little ways back. In Brazil, there was a corruption prosecution all across the political space that shook up politics in Brazil. It was called Operation Car Wash. Operation Car Wash took down various political leaders, but it also took down Lula da Silva. Now, this looked extremely political because Lula was running in the presidential race and the prosecution was able to put him in prison, which stopped him from running in the race, which allowed Bolsonaro to take power. Bolsonaro would have never won if Lula would have been able to run. The failure of the right is the rise of the left. Glenn Greenwald got phone logs. Those phone logs essentially showed collusion between the judges and the prosecution um, and the justice minister that it was politically motivated. <coughs> That it wasn't just, we're just doing our job with the prosecution. It wasn't the prosecutor was just this kind of dispassionate, you know. No, it was politically motivated to put Lula and take Lula out of competition. Now, The Intercept exposed this. Bolsonaro comes out and threatens Greenwald. Brazilian President Herr Bolsonaro threatened American journalist Green Greenwald with jail time on for allegedly having links to hackers who leaked phone conversations of the nation's justice minister. Um, on Monday, Bolsonaro accused Greenwald of committing a crime and alleged he is aligning himself with criminal hackers who exposed phone conversations of the country's justice minister from when he was a judge. The president also alluded to the time uh, jail time could be possible when he was asked whether Greenwald might be kicked out of the country under Brasilia's new deportation rules. Maybe he would be in prison here in Brazil, Bolsonaro said, noting that Greenwald was not likely to be deported due to the fact that he is married to a Brazilian and that he is and his husband have adopted children together. Now, the Intercept pushed back on this, and Greenwald made the point that this is not a fascist dictatorship yet. You can't put me in prison. You don't have anything to put me in prison on. That said, there were busts for the people who leaked the information to Greenwald, and those people have been busted um, by Brazilian authorities. And it is unclear on what is gonna happen to them. Ultimately though, one of the people did say that they were responsible for giving Glenn Greenwald the information. Glenn Greenwald has said that there is more information that will be released and that they haven't gotten to the bottom of it all yet. In fact, he gave this over to other sources and he also made the point that you're attacking me and you haven't said anything about the other sources that we gave this information to because other places publish the information. Um, this is another case. This is um, right here. Listen to this. This is, it's in Spanish, but there's subtitles. So this is Bolsonaro's spokesman. And Bolsonaro's spokesman is asked, what crime are you charging Glenn Greenwald with? You're saying he's guilty of crimes. So, okay, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You have a perspective of things. You don't like the fact that he exposed these politically motivated attacks on Lula. You hate that. Um, it, it shows up for what was going on behind the scenes. What crime are you charging him with? Listen to his answer. His answer is amazing. Para mim, sobre o Glenn, o presidente afirmou foi cometido um crime. Eu queria entender exatamente qual crime foi cometido e com base em que ele faz essas alegações e sobre Há alguma aqueles... dúvida sobre o crime eu, eu tenho qual crime foi 
sobre o crime que foi cometido de invasão. Pelo jornalista? Não há dúvida, por parte do presidente não há dúvida. Qual Acho crime? que não há dúvida por parte de ninguém. Não, eu, 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 eu quero saber qual crime o jornalista cometeu. Repito, há alguma dúvida que houve o cometimento de um crime? O senhor pode dizer porque eu tenho, eu tenho essa dúvida. Esta é a minha resposta. Mas qual o crime? Próxima pergunta, por favor. What crime did Glenn Greenwald commit? The journalists. They were hackers that got their hands on the files. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the hackers, but what crime did Glenn Greenwald commit? I've just answered you. No, you didn't, you, you didn't answer anything. Is there any doubt? Yes, I have doubts. Next question. This is an extraordinary exchange. This is the weirdest exchange. The question is very specific. You're charging them with a crime. You're saying you committed crimes. All right, fair enough. What were they? What were they? Well, just tell us the crimes. Is it a secret court? I mean, for fuck's sake, he exposed you, you embarrassed. But what crimes did he commit in exposing you in this way? And, and let's hear him again. Duas perguntas que não ficaram claras para mim. Sobre o Glenn, o presidente afirmou que foi cometido um crime. Eu queria entender exatamente qual crime foi cometido e com base em que ele faz essas alegações. E sobre Alguma aqueles... dúvida sobre o crime? Eu, eu tenho. Qual crime foi? Sobre o crime que foi cometido de invasão. Pelo jornalista? Não há dúvida. Por parte do presidente, não há dúvida. Qual Acho crime? que não há dúvida por parte de ninguém. Não, eu... eu, eu... Eu quero saber qual crime o jornalista cometeu. Repito, há alguma dúvida que houve o cometimento de um crime? Não, o senhor pode dizer porque eu tenho, eu tenho essa dúvida. Esta é a minha resposta. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. What crime did Glenn Greenwald commit? You mean the cyber crime? Yeah, I get that, but what's, what crime did he commit? Is there any doubt that he committed a crime? Yes, I have doubts. <laughs> Can you articulate to me what's, what, what, it, what it is? Just explain it. Well, when it comes to the president, I mean, the president, you know, there are no doubts. I don't think anybody have doubts. And he just makes a very plain point. I have doubts. <laughs> I'm asking you, I have doubts. I have doubts. Everybody sitting here has doubts. I mean, that's an extraordinary thing that you're attacking a journalist for publishing information that embarrasses you. That's extraordinary. Glenn Greenwald is in Brazil right now. And Glenn Greenwald is under this particular government that has fascistic tendencies. Now, Greenwald is making the point that, look, we still have laws in Brazil. And until those laws are repealed, he has nothing on me. But by the same token, they really didn't fully have anything on Lula, per se. It was a political hit job. They got Lula put in prison. So I am concerned about Glenn Greenwald. And I would imagine if you're Glenn Greenwald, Glenn Greenwald may even be concerned with his own safety. There were all sorts of harassment online going after him and his family. Um, look, he's doing his job. And it, it, if it embarrasses the crooks in Brazil, he's doing God's work. But just because you do good doesn't necessarily mean good follows. Sometimes bad things happen when people do good things, especially when you're running up against state power. There is no such thing as justice, per se. Um, you have events, things happen. Justice is one of those human qualities. And so there's no magic bubble that protects Glenn Greenwald just because he's doing God's work. I am concerned about Glenn Greenwald myself. And so I, I saw this story weeks ago, or like a week ago. Um, And I plan on doing this story, so I'm glad that one of my subscribers brought it to my attention. I mean, well, brought it up, anyway. So, yeah, this is what's taking place. And again, by the way, the people who are suspected to have leaked the information in Glen Greenwald have been busted. Have been busted. I don't want to bring this up. I don't want to bring this up. But if it is true that indeed that is the that group gave to Glenn Greenwald, that would be the fourth group that is busted, given to the intercept. The person said that they saw the Snowden leaks and they saw how powerful those Snowden leaks were and how necessary they were. 
And in this case, good beget good. They wanted to do the same, especially knowing what they knew about the political motivations of those prosecutions. So that's what's going on with Glenn Greenwald right now. Um, there have been all sorts of journalists giving their backing to Glenn Greenwald. Um, Cause look, I mean, it's not an easy thing, man. You're in Brazil, you're not in the US, so you don't necessarily have the full protections of the First Amendment. And in that country, you've already had people killed with political violence. You have a guy who's in office, who's outright fascist, in the literal sense of the word, fascist. Um, not, you know, the way lefties just throw the term around. No, an outright running in the daylight own the term fascist. And so it's not, he's not in Kansas. And so, you know, there, there has to be a bit of trepidation. Um, by the same token, it's his job. And he's doing his job. And what would it be for him to back down when he knows that the information that he's getting from people is legit and did change the course of Brazilian history by allowing Balls and arrow to get in office as opposed to Lula. You are forced to do your job in this case. Forced too strong, but knowing what I know of Glenn, at least by the same from of his work, I've always called Glenn a lion, and it follows here also. You have various people who are giving their support to Glenn. Naomi Campbell. I'm Naomi Klein, author, journalist. I'm sorry, Naomi Klein. Senior correspondent at the Intercept. This is a message to the government of Jair Bolsonaro in support of Glenn Greenwald and the entire team at Intercept Brazil. In recent days, you have been escalating your threats against my colleagues, even dragging in Glenn's husband and children with threats of deportation and imprisonment. The alleged crime? Practicing public interest journalism as protected by the Brazilian constitution. As you well know, my colleagues committed no crime. They stole nothing. They distorted nothing. What they did do is what all journalists are duty bound to do, which is publish and share information that is of vital importance to the public. That is in the Assange is being prosecuted. Chelsea Manning is in prison right now. Um, getting charged a thousand dollars a day for every day that she stays in prison. They're trying to break her again, and they're trying to get her to testify against Assange, assuming they can get Assange brought into the country itself. This notion that journalists are protected, is somewhat of a flexible one, right? Some journalists are protected, stenographers, real journalists, less so. Tucker Carlson even gets Violating involved. our privacy. I'm glad that we know that, thanks to him. I respected his willingness as a man in Washington, D.C. I've been reading with great concern about the threats from the Brazilian government to punish or imprison journalist Glenn Greenwald for his reporting on high-level officials. I've known Glenn Greenwald for many years. We've often disagreed on politics, str strongly disagreed. But I've always respected his integrity. I've had him on my show many times. I believe Glenn is a careful, responsible reporter. I've admired a lot of reporting he's done, including his reporting on the NSA. He revealed how the U.S. government is violating our privacy. I'm glad that we know that, thanks to him. I respected his willingness as a man of the left to attack the Obama administration for its many assaults on press freedom. Not many liberals are willing to do that. He was. I admire that. The subject of press freedom has nothing to do with partisanship. It doesn't matter if you're a right winger or a left winger or somewhere in between. It doesn't even matter if you believe in democracy or not. Everyone should want to live in a society with a free press, a place where journalists have the liberty to inform the public without being threatened or prosecuted as criminals. I gotta be honest, that last statement doesn't make much sense. I mean, if you don't live in a democracy, it doesn't really matter if you have free press. The whole point of a free press in a democratic order is so people can know what their country is doing. Meaning, 
How do you make choices about the leaders who you want to put in office if you don't know anything about those leaders who you go, who are being put in office? If you have a totalitarian government, then the press doesn't really matter because how do you know? It's like that government is essentially controlling the press to some degree anyway, or you don't necessarily have much power in that process. And I, got, I would guarantee you in a totalitarian system, the press is under control. It only matters in democratic systems, or let's say it matters more in democratic systems. Whatever your government is, however it's arranged, this notion that the public itself is involved in giving the government legitimacy, because ultimately the government gets its legitimacy from the fact that it's voted in office. But how do you know what goes on? How do you make your vote? How do you go and pull the lever for this person or that person? How do you make a determination in whether or not you like the direction that your government is going, that the policies that your government is doing, the things that are taking place behind the scenes that go beyond stenographers. I make the point to you that in democratic systems, it is vitally, vitally important that the press remains open and free and adversarial. Adversarial is not necessarily something that we have as a press. We have biased actors who essentially go for this kind of corporate um, corporateocracy or something. To some degree, that makes sense. The media is full of millionaires that are paid by billionaires to essentially tell people to vote against their own self-interest in many respects, especially if you're talking about the Democratic um, debates and the way that they treated Sanders and the way CNN behaves and MSNBC behaves. Um, but free press is vital. And he's right. That's not a partisan issue per se. It only becomes a partisan issue if you're a fascist right-wing government and you don't necessarily like the media and the reporting on your administration. Jim Risen also came out with another video, but Jim Risen, great journalist, head in his ass about the Russian stuff. I guess my point is this. I, I personally think Glenn is in hostile territory, seeing that he doesn't have the protections of the First Amendment. By the same token, he believes that Brazil does have enough protections where he can be there, I guess, relatively safely. That's assuming that everything is done above board and under law. And I got to be honest, that is not necessarily something that I have a huge amount of faith in, considering the threats that have been put towards Glenn's family and other people, other activists in Brazil, even as recent that, that have been killed. I mean, I'm, I'm not being I don't I'm not trying to be hyperbolic. So don't, don't misunderstand me. This woman that's on Glenn's. Was a labor leader killed. She was killed. And it's hard to know whether there was political violence or not. Look, my my point is, I want Glenn to be careful. That's all. And so, if you're asking me what's going on, that's kind of a well-rounded idea of what's taking place right now um, in regards to Glenn Greenwald and Brazil. So, I wanted to do that story anyway, so I'm glad. Uh, shout out to my patron for... Um, Alexis Alexanderson for, for, for giving it to me. Um, 